this video, I want to talk a little bit about presentational aids and how they can be used effectively in your speech. Uh, first, though, let's discuss why we use presentational aids. What's the purpose of presentational aids and how are they helpful? Uh, first, presentational aids can help spark interest in the audience. They can draw an audience in uh, with uh, some visual uses and audio uses and things that can, can really spark an interest in that topic. And they can help increase the understanding of the audience, help them understand complex ideas, help them understand things they might not normally see, um, or abstract ideas, all those types of things that can help increase the understanding of the audience in a lot of different ways. Presentational aids can emphasize key ideas. When the audience see that there's a, sees that there's a visual representation for that particular idea, then they know that it's really important and we can use presentational aids to, to identify and emphasize those key ideas. It can also help the audience in retaining that information. Presentational aids kind of make things memorable and, and, and can provide an opportunity for the audience to take notes and to see things and have it ingrained in their minds and things. So um, it can aid in the retention of this information. And finally, we can use presentational aids uh, to appeal to emotions, to present things visually to an audience so that they can see it and put a face on these topics, so to speak, and, and just really connect um, to the pathos of an audience and, and connect to, to emotionally that topic to the audience. So let's jump right into some types of presentational aids and, and some ways that we can use presentational aids. Then. So first we have the idea of an object or a prop. We can bring that actual thing in. If we have access to it, if it's appropriate to bring uh, to, the, to the speaking occasion, we can bring the actual item itself and, and use that object uh, as, a, as a prop during our speech. If we don't have access, then one thing we can uh, do, either if we don't have access either because it's too big or too small or too expensive or whatever, we can, we can provide a model. We can use a model. To represent these things. Um, so we have examples such as a, a small scale model of a large item. So if you, you want to talk about sailboats and you can't bring an actual sailboat to wherever you're doing your speaking, you can bring in a small scale model of a large item like a, like a sailboat um, to represent that and then use it graphically. Um, so we also have things that are actually graphs. So um, so there are different types of graphs that you can use in a speech, and you're probably familiar with these, so just to give you a quick representation of each. Um, first of all, this is an example of a line graph. You can see here the representation that, of a relationship between money and problems. So the more money you have, the more problems you're probably going to see as well. So we have a line graph representing those different ideas that can be helpful in, in having an audience visualize that information. You can also use a bar graph to represent different things. Uh, for example, the percentage of, of uh, too much sexiness in a, in a different uh, different song representation here. But uh, we can use a bar graph to represent different ideas uh, across the spectrum there. When we want to represent things proportionately, we can do so with the pie graph and demonstrate what proportion of things um, you know, a certain number would represent or a certain item would represent uh, as, a, as a portion of that whole. We can use pie graphs then as well. Some different types of presentations, uh, presentational aids. Sorry, we have uh, different charts and diagrams that we can use, such as a flow chart if we want to explain, you know, the, the process of something or the, the, the layers of uh, uh, structure and hierarchy, such as we have here. Um, you can use a flow chart to do that. You can use a diagram to represent uh, different areas of an object or however would be helpful in that way. You can use a table like the periodic chart here uh, if we want to represent ideas of uh, things so different charts and diagrams that we can use you can also use audio video uh, materials lots of people now using youtube videos in their speeches and uh, or just uh, audio clips in their speeches and things you want to make sure that those don't take up the majority of your speech of course use them proportionately but but they can be very effective in in bringing a sense of immediacy uh, to that item for the for the audience as well you could do a demonstration such as if you're you know Talking about how to perform CPR, you could use a dummy or a person to actually demonstrate the CPR process or the Heimlich maneuver or whatever. You can, you can provide a demonstration for that. Your own personal appearance could be a presentational aid as well. If you're talking about, you know, the, the, the gear that a firefighter would wear, and you, so you may wear that that uh, the firefighting gear yourself and explain each item. Uh, but your personal appearance somehow could be a presentational aid as well. There are different types of media we can use to display it, so I just quickly want to talk about a couple of those different things as well. Um, first of all, it's very common now to use a computer and projector and multimedia software um, to, to help uh, in your presentation. So there are a variety of tools that you can use using a computer and a projector, including just the Internet and, and uh, like the YouTube videos and things like that could be helpful. Uh, but you also have access to uh, maybe to PowerPoint. 
and again, you want to check and make sure you have access to these things, but you may or may not have access to PowerPoint. It's fairly commonly available now and has been for many years. Many people use PowerPoint to give presentations effectively. Um, then you, you also have access to maybe Prezi, uh, which is a, a newer kind of presentational multimedia software that you could use. Um, there are some limitations to Prezi and some things to be aware of, but uh, can be a very effective tool, a very engaging tool uh, in giving a presentation. Uh, you could go old school and use a flip chart. Right? Some people still use those in small. If you have a smaller group, you're giving this presentation to a smaller group. A flip chart may be very effective. Uh, you want to be cautious to prepare these things in advance, otherwise it starts to look a little sloppy. But a flip chart may be an option for you. You can use a poster. Go again old school. Just go to Walmart and spend 99 cents on a poster board and, and present a poster. Uh, as long as it's well put together and done in advance, that can be very effective. Uh, the whiteboard is an option if you have one available, but I would caution you, you know, most times when we do things on the whiteboard, it seems very last minute. because We're drawing on the whiteboard, which also means we're turning our back to the audience, and there are a lot of limitations to the whiteboard, but as a last resort, I mean, it is an option there. Uh, handouts you, you can use, but you do, again, want to be cautious. Um, when you hand things out, especially during your speech, then that tends to distract the audience. So if you have a handout, you want to make sure that you do so uh, ideally at the end of your speech, after you're done speaking, so it's not so much of a distraction, but it can be helpful for the audience to have something to take with them and have some of that information uh, on a piece of paper with them. So, a couple of tips for presenting aids, uh, so for presenting visual aids, how to use visual aids. Um, first of all, use the conceal, reveal, conceal technique. You don't want your visual, visual aid out there all the time. Otherwise, it's going to distract the audience if it's out there all the time. So uh, you want to make sure that uh, you're only revealing uh, that presentation aid when you're referring to it and when you're using it. Uh, and if you're using something like PowerPoint, as I've been doing, it's ideal to kind of conceal the information until you're ready to talk about it. I don't have the other points on this on this slide available to you because I don't want you reading ahead. I want you focused on what we're doing here. So you want to conceal that information until it's time to reveal it, then reveal it fully and make sure the audience can see it and use it and discuss it thoroughly. And then when you're done as best as you can, hide it, put it away somewhere so that they can't see it and they're not distracted by it again. Okay. You want to be sure that you explain and reference your aids. Don't just have a model out there sitting out there while you're while you're speaking and never refer to it, never talk about it, never explain why it's there. Even if it seems self-evident, you want to make sure that you're incorporating these visual aids and, and actually using them during your speech. You want to be sure that your aids are big enough for everybody to see. You ought to think about uh, the, the people in the back row. What are they going to be able to see? And if they can't see it, then that's going to be an issue. Um, so if you're, again, you don't want to use a flip chart for a group of uh, a couple hundred people because they're not going to be able to see that, right? You need to uh, adjust your presentational aids for the size of the group and, and make sure that everybody's going to be able to see that visual aid. Be sure that you practice with your visual aid. It's, it's important that you be able to incorporate these things smoothly. So if you have a model and things you're going to be referencing to, be sure that you practice with them. Be sure that you're practicing with your PowerPoint so you know when to click slides. And be sure you're practicing with any technology that you're using and be aware of any uh, limitations that it may have or opportunities you may have. Are you using a, a clicker in your hand to, to forward the PowerPoint? Or are you going to have to be tied to a keyboard or a mouse somewhere? Um, what's the situation with all that? That all needs to be worked out in advance. You need to practice with these things. So during your speech, the audience is confident in your ability as a speaker, but also they're focused on the content of what you're saying and not the fact that you're fumbling around with your presentational aid. Be sure you're giving a speech, not a slideshow. Don't overuse PowerPoint. Uh, nobody's going to be as impressed by that as, well, they, hopefully they won't be as impressed by that as they will be why, by what you're saying. So um, make sure you're limiting the information that's available on slides and and if the audience can just read your speech off of your PowerPoint slides, then what's the point of them listening to you? So be sure you're giving a speech and not a slideshow. Um, use transitions, such as I'm, I'm using here to, to uh, present information kind of one line at a time. Be sure you're not reading off the slides. Um, and don't have so much information up there that you're reliant on those slides. In fact, you shouldn't really be looking at the slides that much at all. You need to look at the audience and talk to the audience, not to the slide or your visual aid. You need to be sure that your eye contact remains on the audience. You ought to, again, this is part of practicing and knowing what you're, what you're using and practicing with that visual aid, though, so that you can talk to the audience and not be tied uh, so much to that visual aid. Some additional tips. Keep it simple and professional. Um, follow what we call the 6x6 six six rule, which means um, no more than 6 uh, lines per slide and 6 words per line. 
so no more than six words per each line and no more than six lines per slide if you have more than that divide it up go to the next slide do whatever you need to do but otherwise that slide becomes crowded and, and too wordy and, and just doesn't look very good either don't use random clip art it doesn't really add anything to your speech just don't just have clip art there to have clip art there if you're going to use visuals be sure they have some connection to what you're talking about and add a little more no more than two fonts. As you can see here, this example is terrible. It's hard to read. You just you shouldn't have any more than two fonts. Typically one for your header at the very top of the slide here. You can see I've got one type of font there, and then the rest of my slides, except for this one example line, have all been a different uh, a different font. So uh, actually, I think they're the same font, but they may be different. But but even so, you should not use more than two fonts at any point here. No more than four colors. Um, first of all, it's unnecessary. Secondly, it's distracting, and uh, and just just don't do it. Keep things simple. Keep it simple. Uh, contrast the font in the background. You may be having trouble reading that line because I didn't do a very good job of contrasting. Right? You want the the text to be in a dark enough color that it contrasts against the the background. So either dark text for a light background or light text for a dark background. But either way, it should be easy for the audience to read. Ideally, right? No animations or transitions really like that that I just had on there. That's really unnecessary. It doesn't add anything to your speech except it will make the audience wait for what it is you're trying to put up there. Just have it appear uh, and then move on. Uh, when you're when, when you're transitioning, don't use fancy uh, transitions between the slides. You'll see that mine are just just move directly to the next slide. It's unnecessary. Again, doesn't add to the content of your speech. Doesn't add to the audience's understanding of what you're trying to talk about. So just leave it out. No bolding, underlining, or italics unless it's really absolutely necessary and absolutely critical. Have a backup plan. What happens if you get there and the computer's not working and you can't use your PowerPoint slide? Or if somebody's bringing you know, a presentational aid for you to use and they forget it or they don't have it, or if you don't have access to it at the last second, the, the show must go on. You still have to give your speech, so be sure you have a backup plan for any presentational aid that you're using. Use consistent design elements, as we said. Limit the number of colors, limit the number of... of uh, uh, of fonts that you're using, things like that, but also use the same background for all your slides. You'll notice it might have all been the same same background for all those slides. Use consistent de design elements in that way, consistent style of PowerPoints and things, just providing that element of consistency and professionality. Uh, so again, colors, fonts, sizes, all these things should be consistent throughout the entire speech. If you have any questions about visual aids, I'd be happy to answer them and happy to, to preview or look at any and provide feedback on any visual aids you think you might want to use, presentational aids you might want to use, feel free to email me. I'm always available via email. So in the meantime, happy communicating.